bins are a way to facilitate the collection and analysis of qualitative data. More specifically, bins can be used as a means for data storage, data coding, and data retrieval. In this case, while reading the literature on any topic that you choose, the literature itself can be organized and coded, after which the contents of the bins can be retrieved for analytical and compositional purposes. Bins are a key approach to organizing any literature base for what can be an indefinite period of time. The BINS method for qualitative data analyses was developed by Miles and Huberman in the mid-1990s. It was adapted for use in codifying the scholarly literature by Audrey Amrine Beardsley, an education professor at Arizona State University. The BINS method can be used anywhere research is used for compositional purposes, dissertations, scholarly articles, journal publications, or any research-based essays or statements. Think of a bin as a basket, into which you will put data from the scholarly literature that you read on any topic. Those things from the literature that you might find insightful, interesting, or useful as they pertain to your research you place in your bins. So how do you get started? Once you have your research topic, determine the location where you will store your bins. This method was originally developed for use in a word processing software, but new citation management systems can be useful as well. For each article, before you begin reading, start with inserting the APA citation of the full reference at the top of your bins document. As you read, you cut and paste into your BINS document anything that you would normally highlight or underline. One key is that you want all authors to be included in each citation, because if you have multiple articles from similar authors in your BINS, it can get really confusing. And then you continue to read and read and read. The only rules here are that you must cite everything as per APA to deliberately avoid plagiarism, and you must commit to not quit working on your bins until all key literature sources are cited so that you can feasibly write an academic paper on the topic. As a side note, software like Zotero or Paperpile, along with your PDF markup tools, can be a big help in this. The APA citation is important because you're reading and you're comprehending but you're not doing what we might consider a traditional annotated bibliography where you have to summarize everything you read into one paragraph. What you're literally doing is taking the key content that stands out to you and copying and pasting it into your bins with quotation marks around everything that you copy and paste and the appropriate APA citation, not only for the article at the top, but also per quotation that you put with page numbers. This way, you are positive, absolutely 100% sure that you realize this is not your work, these are not your words, this is not your text. This is for the future, so you just don't accidentally think that you wrote something and then insert it into a paper and at a later date get charged with such a crime. When you begin, especially as a new researcher on any new topic, you will likely cut and paste a lot into your bins, given that you are likely a novice in this area. But as you proceed, you will approach something called saturation. That is, in terms of your knowledge of the literature, in whatever area, you will notice that your copies and pastes will reduce in frequency. For example, imagine you're starting a brand new research agenda and you're going to look into value-added modeling. When you open up that literature base and start reading, you're going to be copying and pasting a lot because you're a novice in the area. You'll be copying and pasting what might seem six months later to be very standard basic definitions. You are developing your own expertise just via the process of reading. So when do you stop collecting information? Again, we're shooting for saturation. 
It's not that you need to read every article that's ever been written on the topic, but you need to read every article to the point that when you read the next article, it's really like nothing new. Nothing is going to be surprising. That's when you know you've reached your point of saturation. Once you feel that you've come close to saturation, read back through the entire document and code common content in all capital letters. This helps with content retrieval since most word processing software allows you to search specifically for words listed in all caps. Write your codes in all caps at the beginning of each entry. Keep in mind that you can have multiple codes per entry. Some common codes include definitions, theory, history, policy, methods, findings, conclusions, etc. If you use history as a code, for example, you would add that to any entry that has to do with the history of what you're researching. Another useful code is quotes. Sometimes you're reading a really fabulous researcher's work and they have good quotes you can turn back to, so you don't want to lose them. In your bins, code them as quotes, again, in all capitals, and you'll be able to find them easily in the future. Create a table at the beginning of your bins document that records all codes used. This lets you keep track of what codes you have used and to spot any discrepancies. Revisit these codes every or almost every time you add new content to make sure you're not creating a random arbitrary code that does not reconcile with the rest of the document. When you become an expert at this, every time you insert some content, you can code it right away and say, yeah, this had to do with history, this had to do with theory, and this is a really great quote from an author whom I respect. Once your codes are organized and complete, you can begin to write. Search your bins document using your codes to organize your writing. Simply reviewing the codes will help you organize a framework in terms of whatever you're wanting to write. Keep in mind that so far your process has been fairly brainless to just read and cut and paste sections because you've not synthesized anything yet. You've just been storing information for future retention and use. But now that it's time to write, it's time to conduct analyses. It's not academic writing to say such and such said this and such and such said that. You have to actually analyze it. You have to analyze all of the content that you coded into a particular category for synthesis and assertion making. That's where the big brain work comes in. Only once in a while as a good academic writer should you use block quotes. The only time you use block quotes is when you literally cannot say it better yourself. Other than that, it's up to you to do the analyses using everything that you've taken from all of these documents and putting it into your own words in a way that's accessible, feasible, readable, and accurate. Attending to bins also requires occasional cleaning. When coding, for example, the researcher might also clean the bins as they're organizing their newly defined thinking. For example, you may have included content at the beginning that seemed great, but later on, the content may seem commonsensical. You may clean the bins out because you already know that information or you have your own definitions to use. The maintenance element is key to your continuing to be a strong academic writer. Like with any important files, it's certainly wise to back up all of your bins in a secure fashion. If you have fully invested in following the bins method, losing that record is akin to losing your identity as a scholar. No matter what you write, you can always go back to your bins to edit, search, or find the resources or themes that you need. Here are some example bins from Audrey Amrine Beardsley. This is a study she conducted on teacher quality right after No Child Left Behind was passed in 2002, which included a critique of the policy to determine the alignment between the federal government's definition of a highly effective teacher and the research. That required reading a lot of the research on how researchers define teacher quality. Here are the first two pages of the bins for the study. The set of bins was about 300 plus total pages. You can see here all of the codes and APA citations that she used to write a few articles on this particular topic. 
Before coding it, she would read the article and say, wow, this is a really great quote or some kind of text that she wanted to retain. So she copy and pasted it with the citation. At some point after nearing saturation, she came back in and put in the codes. This example here has two codes related to defining teacher quality and rural areas. It also had to do with No Child Left Behind specifically, which is the NCLB code. You can see that they map onto the codes in the categorization table at the top. On each of the pages, please note that the title of the article again is formatted as per APA. It's also bolded so that the quotes are distinct from the citations. You can also see each quote includes the full list of authors and the page numbers. When you're actually writing, if you don't have the page number, you will have to go back to the original source. This is of course for the future, but it is also to avoid any accidental plagiarism. You're taking quotes directly from people's work, and so you do not want to mess around with this. You should be meticulous and deliberate so that you never accidentally assume that you wrote something you did not. In the end, and if done well, entire articles can be written about one, two, or all of the codes within your bins. Bins not only help to organize the scholarly literature, but they also help to make a scholarly writer's research-based statements more accurate, clear, straightforward, and powerful as situated in the representative and hopefully saturated literature. This should help you all as aspiring scholars and aspiring academic writers. One of the challenges to creating your bins is simply getting the content into the Word document in the first place. That is, doing lots of copy and pastes from PDF documents or manually retyping lots of text. But there are some tools that will help you with that, and we're going to look at one of them that does that, Zotero. If you're not familiar with it, Zotero is a free reference management system that helps you keep track of your citations and bibliographies in your word processor. We'll begin by showing you what the software is designed to do, and then we'll show you how Zotero can help make creating your bins much easier. The whole idea behind a reference management system is that it allows you to quickly add your citations and build your bibliographies. So before I get into bins, let me give you the idea of what Zotero is designed to do, whether or not you use it for your bins. Once you've installed Zotero, you can see on the right-hand side of the screen now, you'll be prompted to add the Zotero plugin to your browser. I've done that, and because I've installed it, you now see a small icon in my toolbar for adding content to Zotero. Once you have that plugin installed, you can start adding articles to your Zotero library right from your browser. And now I'll show you how that works. I've got three articles that I have found online that I want to add to my Zotero database, which you can see here on the right-hand side of the screen. All I do is click on the Zotero icon, and you'll notice that the icon has turned into a little article because it recognizes that it's an article. And I'm going to click that article button, and you'll see it's adding it into my Zotero library. And after it's been added, you can see that it's downloaded the PDF as well, and I'm going to clean that up right now by right-clicking on my PDF and choosing Rename File from Parent Metadata. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and fix the capitalization because with APA, we don't use all caps. So I'm going to set this to sentence case. Once I've done that, I've got two more articles that I want to add. So I'm going to add each of those as well and I'm going to repeat that same process. Then I'm going to add this article as well and fix the capitalization. Once I've got my three articles in here, I go to Microsoft Word and I'm going to go ahead and add the citations we've just included in our Zotero database. I'm going to pick the location where I want to put the citation, which is right about here. 
I'll click on the Zotero tab and add the citation. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll pick one of my references. So let's do methodological concerns. You'll see it's added the citation with APA style. Here I'll put two citations in. And then down here, I'll do a third. Once I have those citations, I can go ahead, create my bibliography, and then click Add Bibliography. In there, you'll see my bibliography all correctly formatted. So that's the main idea of how Zotero is designed to operate to help make the writing process much smoother. This is the primary use for this software, but we're going to take Zotero a step further by using it to create our bins. The first thing we'll do is make sure that Zotero's built-in PDF reader is turned on. I'm going to click on Preferences in General, and I'm going to make sure that it's set to use the PDF reader that's built into the software. And once I've done that, I'm going to double click on an article PDF to start reading. So here's one of the articles that I downloaded. I'm going to highlight some text here. And let's go ahead and actually make some notes on this. Now we want to get it into bins. So we show the notes panel, we click the plus sign, and we say add note from annotations. Then you'll see that it has added the notes that I've created, including at the bottom a little comment that I added. So to create your bin, you're going to go back to Word and you're going to pick up the bibliography from the item that you're going to add and paste that into Word and go to the annotations and copy everything over to your bin. At this point, you have a little bit of cleanup to do, but you only need to do your coding. And I hope you can see how useful and helpful Zotero is for creating your bins. And that's a brief and speedy introduction to using the citation management tool Zotero to enhance your BINS experience. You may wish to revisit, replay, or slow down the video as you're setting up your own Zotero workspaces. Thank you for listening, and good luck in your searching, discovering, organizing, and synthesizing literature.